Okay. I'll open this meeting of the City of Kerrville Planning and Zoning Commission and call to order. Uh, Dorothy, would you call roll, please? Yes, sir. Bob Waller? Uh, here. Garrett Harmon? Here. Don Barnett? Michael Siegerman? Here. Rustin Zuber? Here. David Jones? Here. Marty Leonard? Here. Thank you. Uh, please uh, record that Marty Leonard will be sitting here in place of Don. The first item on the agenda is Visitor Citizens Forum. Any person with business not scheduled on the agenda is encouraged to briefly speak uh, to the commission. Please fill out the speaker request form. I have three, by the way, and give it to the commission's uh, secretary prior to the meeting. Uh, the number of speakers would be limited uh, to the first 10. Each speaker limited to three minutes. No formal action uh, can be taken on these items as the Open Meetings Act requires formal action items uh, be posted on the agenda no later than uh, 72 hours before the meeting. If formal action is required, uh, the items will be placed on an agenda for a future meeting. Item number two is the consent agenda. All items below on the consent agenda are considered routine or ministerial in nature and will be enacted with one motion. And there will be no separate discussion of items unless a commissioner or a citizen so requests, in which case the item or items will be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately. Item 2A is approval of the minutes uh, from the April 19, 2018 meeting on page 2. Now, I can't remember, Bob. Were you chair of that meeting where we were discussing the neon sign? No. I, uh, no, I, I was. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. So, so Commissioner Harmon did not call the, to order. It's Waller. That would be Waller. That's what I was thinking. Good catch. Thank you. Uh, Dorothy, if you'll make that modification. Yes, Any other edits or comments? If not, I'll accept a motion. I'll move to approve the minutes with the, that change on the call to order. I have a motion. Do I have a second? A second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, raise your right hand. Uh, passes 5-0. Thank you. Item number three is a public hearing consideration and action. Uh, 3A is a public hearing and resolution. Public hearing and consideration of resolution concerning a requested uh, conditional use permit to add an apartment unit uh, to the existing single family residential use on lot six, block six, Richards Edition, located 1620. First Street, uh, file number 2018-024 on page four of your agenda. Uh, yes, good evening, uh, commissioners. My name is Sabino Kunsel. I'm the uh, staff planner that prepared the staff report for you this evening. Uh, before I start, I will uh, I will uh, let members of the audience know that we do have uh, some additional copies of the, of the staff report, of the written staff report, available on the table that you signed in, uh, just in case anybody would like to see that. And there is a better uh, copy also of the, of the site plan for this item. So this item comes before you this evening um, because at this, at this address, the, the zoning here at this address is R1 single family. Uh, the applicant has uh, started to construct a, uh, a second accessory building on her property and uh, before she uh, comes forward with, with requesting and uh, filing an application for building permit, uh, which is a requirement uh, for an accessory building uh, of this size, that, um, that the actual question of the use of uh, using the building for a second living unit or an apartment in this case uh, would be would be permitted by 
recommendation of this commission and by the city, ultimately by the city council by resolution. So that is the question that is before you this evening. We do not yet have an application for a building permit, uh, nor have we had any, so we have had no formal review at this, at this time. Uh, my recommendation was to hold off until, um, until the time that uh, the question of use has been, has been uh, thoroughly vetted through this commission and through the city council. So uh, this is just an aerial of that of that area. As I mentioned, this the home is zoned R1 single family. It is surrounded by R1 single family zoning, and and single family detached homes. So this is a copy of that of that site plan. You'll see that the uh, there's a 320 square foot building that has been penciled into the survey. And I put a cleaner copy of that survey at your at your places this evening. So again, uh, the because we have not gone all the way through the through the review process at this time, uh, there are a few things that to point out though, and that is that if the use itself is approved, that it, uh, we would be looking at a possible building setback variance application as well because the. The use of the structure as uh, as an apartment would have to meet the 25 foot required rear setback. It does meet the six foot side set setback. Uh, it's about seven feet away from that side uh, from that side property line, so it does uh, it does meet the setback on that side. Uh, there are some questions still remaining regarding the building separation and and how that would uh, need to come come into compliance. There are options uh, for that. There's also the question of a sidewalk that would be triggered by the any application for any addition to a structure in any uh, in any area of town, with some exceptions, uh, triggers the requirement for a public sidewalk, and there is a uh, possible waiver that we would that we would take to the city council if uh, if requested. And it's verbally, I do have a uh, request from the applicant that she intends to request that do not yet have that everything formalized yet uh, to take forward, but I anticipate that. So some, uh, a photo, some photos that the applicant has submitted, and you do have some additional photos that were at your places uh, that were sent to us from a neighbor. Go back to that last picture if you would. Are we looking at the back of the residence or the front of the additional building? Well, the, the applicant is here, and I would let her present also, um, and, and t because I'm not exactly sure, because we're, we're too close up here, okay. and I wasn't on the, on the property myself. So the items, uh, the criteria for review are in your staff report. And um, technically, you have things like uh, you'll see on the on the next slide. Basically, things like terrain impacts to traffic, uh, things of that nature. Also, compliance with the purpose statement of the of the zoning, which this zoning classification is primarily single family, uh, with bed and breakfast and apartment an apartment. Uh, in association with a dwelling unit as a conditional use in this in this zoning district. Uh, and then I mentioned the, the terrain, but uh, drainage also, erosion, erosion impacts, which this would be minimal. Uh, so there are just some technical requirements that we, that we look at. But th something that is more discretionary is the question of nuisance um, and other <coughs> considerations, also the impact to the neighborhood. And that's why this, uh, these types of questions, the question of use, come before you and the city council uh, to measure, it and then with the associated public hearing, to also measure the, um, the potential impact. So it is a, um, a, a question of discretion at this level, but also then at the, at the city council level. So your options tonight after holding the public hearing 
would be to approve, uh, recommend approval, I'm sorry, the city council, recommend uh, approval with conditions that you believe would mitigate any possible or potential negative impacts as a result of this use in this, in this building, keeping in mind that an accessory building, like a shed or, um, or a different type of use, does not need a conditional use permit. It's the fact that it's being used as, will be used as an apartment. Uh, tabling the item is also an option if we need, or you believe that we need more time to work through some issues, and, um, or out denial if you don't believe that there are any, uh, if you don't believe that there are any mitigating conditions that we could add to the resolution eventually as we get to city council. So with this, we did, we did notify surrounding property owners within 200 feet and put an ad in the paper. We have had uh, two, I have had two people come in and speak to me. One, uh, one sent an email in addition to voicing concerns. Uh, both uh, neighbors voiced concerns about some existing issues at the, at the property, but also concerns about putting, because it, it, essentially what, uh, what this is a request for is to increase density. So on a case by case and site by site basis, but essentially be adding an additional household to the to this area or to this lot. So um, an apartment would not be limited to just the members of the family. It would be it could be then if approved could be rented out as a whole separate household. And uh, with that, the uh, public hearing is your is your gauge to assist you in uh, measuring that the uh, potential for negative impacts. And at this point, with the input that we've received, we would, um, and especially if the public hearing bears that out, uh, then we would be recommending denial of that. I have one couple of questions. So uh, the current zoning, is it R1 or RT? It's R1. It's, it's R1. Okay. Single family. I thought it says in here subject site RT, but it looked from the picture to aerial, it's all mm -hmm. residential. Yes. So it's R1, okay. And the other question, uh, what's the definition of an apartment? In, in this case, we actually, if you look at the zoning ordinance, the zoning ordinance just only uh, restricts that definition to an apartment as as in an apartment in an apartment complex. The, um, the, in this particular case, there is, no def there is no definition, so it falls back to what the typical definition of it in, uh, in our Webster's Dictionary, which would be uh, a separate unit that for rent to a separate household. Okay. Under the, under the conditional use permit, <coughs> do we have the ability to put a condition on there that this can be used only by a family member? Is that a condition that we could legally? Mike? Uh, you know what, that's a great question. I don't know. I don't know, I didn't research that. Okay. But if you want to add that, I mean, we can have a look into that. Okay. Sorry. Okay. I mean, I can understand that the discontent with the neighbors if you just put an apartment in the back and you want to rent it out. That's really not a necessity. Okay, we're ready for the public hearing. Thank you, Sabina. Okay, we'll open the public hearing at 445. Anybody wishing to address the commission, uh, please go to the lectern. Uh, give us your name and address, please. I have uh, three requests for speakers. I'll go in the order they were received. Uh, Gary Wilson. My name is Gary Wilson and we own property right next door to the property that is asking to put this apartment in or actually has already built this storage shed on the site. They didn't want to make it a living area. And we have some real concerns about this going up next to our property. Uh, in the past, we owned a house over on West Jefferson Street that the neighbor turned a uh, garage into an apartment. 
And one of the things that happened over the years, and we lived over there 30 plus years, raised our children there. Um, we had all kinds of different people going in and out of there. Uh, generally, people that rent apartments do not have the same lifestyle as people that live in a single family dwelling and are raising kids. <coughs> had everything from drugs to parties to the cops that were there to there, there's just a long list um, I would question the integrity of the building itself and whether it would actually qualify and be up to code for an apartment building it looks to me like it was built as a storage shed uh, there's dogs running loose in the back of the property with access underneath which there is no way to clean up the droppings or the feces that will be a problem with this property. It, it, it already is a problem with this property. Okay. Uh, and if you've got some of the pictures that were handed out, you can look at the property and see there's everything from pallets to other things that are in it. And I know some people are not able to clean their property as good as others, but um, it creates fire hazard for the rest of us that live right there. And uh, I would really, really appreciate if you deny this because I feel like it will... Uh, lower the value of my property right next door. We've got a nice little brick, two bedroom, one bath house that's there. Currently, my daughter lives there. Uh, in the past, we've rented it out. We haven't had a large turnover rate. I think I've had, in 10 years, three different renters. Um, and so, uh, people like the house and generally like the neighborhood. <coughs> but this is something that we don't have in the neighborhood right now. We do not have an apartment. We have apartments down in the corner, okay, about block and a half away or so, but we do not have an apartment in the neighborhood itself. Okay, and that's basically all I have to say. Great, thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Sharon, is it Doss? It's, it's Davis, but I'll hold off until some of my questions are answered. Okay. Uh, Jessica Whitehead. You can drop that mic if you want. Okay. That's okay. I felt the same. I think it's hard to hear. <laughs> there you go. Hi. I'm Jessica Whitehead, and I live in the home uh, that is in question or on the table. Um, I've lived in this um, home for four years now, and I lived in the home I rented right next door for three years prior to the owner um, of this home offering that I purchase it for me and my children. Um, I see I have three minutes. Okay. The entire home is a work in progress. Um, there are plenty of things in the backyard that need to be worked on, um, including a fence that I have uh, with minimal finances attempted to put up as a barrier between my dogs and the dogs that live behind my house, which creates the conflict with the animals. Um, there was a, a situation where actually we called um, the animal welfare, animal society people to come out and have them um, address our neighbors behind us and ask them. They never brought their dogs inside ever. So for my dogs, they're just playmates um, and they get very rowdy. I'm not denying that at all. But I just want to make it clear that we are attempting to do whatever we can to rectify the situation. Um, with the limited finances that I had, I bought a bamboo, you know, $150, which is a lot for me, but um, worth of fencing that we attached to the back fence. Um, and they're f trying to get at each other. They've torn up my $150. <laughs> we thought maybe we would use pallets, so we started to get pallets. But um, my mother and I have a lot of physical ailments, so we're not able to really do that on our own. Um, and it was just temporary until my financial situation could increase, which I've just been waiting on my tax returns to be able to put up a permanent fence behind that back, that back fence line. Um, so that's, I just want everybody to be aware of that because it's not just a problem for my neighbors, it's a problem for me, and it's a problem for my kids, and it's a problem for my mom. Um, so um, we're working on it. As we're working on that. Um, and I know that there's been some things brought up about congestion as far as vehicles in the neighborhood as well. Um, none of that congestion comes for me unless it's a holiday and my, my older kids are in town with their cars. 
um, directly across the street from me. Just within the last couple of days, a family moved out, and they had about 10 family members living there, and they had all of their friends over, and there were times where they had the whole yard, the whole driveway, and the whole street blocked off with their vehicles to the point where we could not even back out of our own driveway. But we respectfully went and asked them to move and could you know, work around the situation. Um, also, directly on the other side of the Wilson's home is a halfway house, um, a women's halfway house that houses many people, many vehicles, and almost directly across from them is another halfway house <coughs> that houses many people and has many vehicles including very many large vans. On the other side of the women's halfway house, they usually have an RV or a large boat par parked in the road. I have four spots in my driveway and four vehicles at the home. Parking's not an issue, for us at least. Um, also, with nuisance and police and drugs and fights and all of that, I can promise you, if you look back <laughs> through police records, that that does happen, but it's never to my house. It's to the other, there are some problem, problem areas in, in the neighborhood, um, and it's just increasing, but not, not as a fault of ours. Um, also, just to, to try and wrap it up, my mother is disabled, and I have children that I need, cannot afford daycare for, so my mother, um, Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. She, so she's here to, we're trying to help each other. She's going to need help. I'm her only daughter, um, her only family. Actually here, she's my only family, and she's my children's grandmother. So we're just trying to coexist and be the best tenants possible um, and be the best neighbors, too, as well. I mean, that's just, you know, we love the Lord and don't want to cause any problems, but we just need help and some um, understanding and compassion, just like we would give for everybody else, and we have. So that's okay. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, Ms. Tavis, I just had a couple of questions. This is a freestanding building in behind the house, and as far as I know, it's not even connected except maybe for power lines. Uh, so how it can be, because it says in the letter that to be, I, I don't have my letter with me here, but I believe it says that this apartment to the existing house, which it is not, it's a freestanding. But my, my concern would be like fire or EMTs or ever, if the person living at the at the home is not there, and something happens to the mother, you know, are they going to know how to get back there? If a fire should come about, do they have access to to that house? And it's just, you know, it's just things like that, and it, it kind of makes you wonder. Well, if so and so can do it, well then, can so and so down here do it? You know, well. I'd like to put a shed in my backyard to rent out, but you know that's not that doesn't make good sense. So, and I understand the circumstance. I mean, I understand wanting to take care of your mother. I moved down here seven years ago from Arkansas to take care of my mother before she died. So I understand that, but it's still it's uh, it's different circumstances. Thank you. Thank you. Not that you could tell I was nervous. <laughs> Any other comments for the uh, public hearing? No, hearing none, seeing none. I close the public hearing yet. Yeah. Uh, 455. No commissioners, comments? I think we might have had another speaker that wanted to speak back there. Is it appropriate that we can open it back up? Oh, you did? Okay, I didn't see your hand, excuse me. Hello. We'll reopen the public hearing at 456. Um, I live at uh, 1609 Deer Trail. I live right behind the residence. And your name, sir? Bruce Castillo. Thank you, Bruce. And I live right back behind. And um, we, the only, like, like she was saying, the only problem we do had is we had with the dogs. We got that straightened up. We took her and took them inside. Uh, there ain't no other problems. We've never had no problems with her. Um, 
I can see that that uh, she's taking care of her mother. You know, uh, I know that if the MTs or whatever comes in there, you know, I mean, they have to let them know that they're there. You know, and and it it it, it doesn't matter if she has a structure there. To you know, I'm right behind there. It don't bother me a bit. You know, it don't bother my family. You know, um, but. I just feel like it's, you know, running water maybe. Uh, I can see that so she can take a shower, whatever, back there, you know. But, you know, that's that's common deal, you know. Um, but there ain't no bother, sir. And, and you know, she, you know, it's just like I say, if the MTs come in there, if the ambulance, she, they know where to go. As long as they know where to go, then it shouldn't be a problem. You know, so that's all I have to Thank say. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Castillo. Yes, Appreciate sir. it. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Should I? I am the person to. Uh, uh, you're welcome to address I, this group at the public hearing. Or do you just have questions? No, we may have some questions, but I need to close the public hearing first. If you'd like to address it. So, yes. I am Julie Klink, the person in question. And uh, um, this started out just kind of as a extra space because I was living with my daughter in her house. And I came down three years ago from Oregon where um, I had the misfortune of everything I owned in my house was sold out from under me. And I lost everything. It was more like a theft. And I just sold that house, came down here, because my daughter said, come on, Mom, come down here. Oh, so I did. And I tried living with her, but she gave me the master bedroom. And she was either sleeping on the couch in the living room or with one of her children. And I said, honey, this is your house. You need to have it. And I went to an apartment. And then things started getting tight financially for her. And I said, well, look, why don't we? I'll come back. I'll live in the house. and But I will not take that bedroom so I was sleeping in with my granddaughter and then I had all my stuff in storage and I thought okay let's build this thing at least I'll have this place to use you know and stretch out <laughs> so started that and then it looked so nice <laughs> and inviting <laughs> just this little space is very small it's only one person could live there at all. So I, I wasn't thinking right. I should have done something else, I guess, checked with y'all before I did this. It's, and I'm real sorry about that, but um, the dogs are under control. I'm sorry if the back of it doesn't look good enough. Um, I've been thinking about putting something around the bottom of it to connect it with the ground. Um, but I'm not going to do anything until I even find out if I'm going to be told to leave it or not. But I just wanted a little little space to, to do the stuff I do and live out the rest of the days. I'm 67 right now. I don't know how much time I have. Um, none of us do, but I just wanted to be there and help my daughter where I can. The kids love running back there, coming and getting candy out of my candy dish. I don't know. It's just, it's just really nice. Um, so, okay, I guess that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Clinton. Uh, anybody else would like to address this public hearing? 
If not, I close the public hearing again at 501. Uh, commissioners, comments, questions? Um, I guess I'd like to address a couple of the concerns. I have some, go ahead, I have some questions for Sabine. Um, when, uh, and I should know more about the building codes than I do, <laughs> but <laughs> the, uh, I guess regarding the skirting around the bottom of the structure, all code compliance would be addressed during after, you know, to, to get a building permit and inspections would then ensue and so all building codes would be enforced um, during the finish of this, is that correct? Yes. 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 Okay. It would be, yeah. would be required. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know about the skirting. We do have our building official here. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, there is no skirting requirement for a, uh, in the zoning ordinance, there is for manufactured homes. Mm -hmm but not for uh, traditional uh, but stick builds. There's foundation details, I believe. Mm -hmm. But, there, but there, that could also be a condition that we impose on the conditional uses that the structure has skirting. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. And then the same with a privacy fence. Not that it's required by the zoning, but we could, as a condition, require a six-foot privacy fence to help with the dog situation and and just with the concerns of some of the other neighbors? Yes, okay. yes. Single family does not require fencing, so we mm -hmm. would not be enforcing any fencing at mm -hmm. this point unless it were a condition of, of the conditional use. Yeah, and I think as a part of that, maybe a gate, making sure that there's a, a gate that emergency personnel can get through without having to go through the house to get to that, okay. All right. A couple of I have a couple of questions, uh, and let's start with the zoning. Uh, the R1 zoning is a district primary for single-family detached dwelling units with bed and breakfast schools and a home with an apartment as a conditional use. So this is part of this zoning code that a conditional use could be allowed for an apartment behind with the house. That's correct. Okay. Yes. Uh, anything that is built as an apartment back there has to meet all, like Garrett said, has to meet all code requirements. It will have to be completely up to code before it could be even built. Or when, when it's built, it has to be completely up to code, correct? Yes, the structure was built without building permits, as Mrs. Clink testified. Well, so getting by the structure that was built without a permit, that structure is not, is not really what we're talking about because that's not, that can't be approved. Am I right? Not at, not at this point. Right. So it that could, that, could, that cannot that. be approved as an apartment. It's It was built without a permit. It's, I'm assuming it's not up to code. It could be if it were brought up to code. That's what I'm saying. If it was brought up to code and it met all of our requirements, it falls under the one of the conditional use permits for R1 zoning according to what we have here. Yes. So. Has anybody looked at framing or anything on it at this point? No. It appears, I drove over and took a look at the front, it appears that there is there is pedestrian access to get to the back. If under worse circumstances the fire department had to get back there or the EMS had to get back there, they can't get back there. So that's really not, I don't think that's an issue. Uh, but that, that was my question. Assuming this was built properly, it was up to code, it was met all the requirements for someone to be, to be classified as an apartment. According to what we have here, it's one of the conditional use permits that is that is that is granted or is possible. Possible, yes. Okay. Should, so should we have it looked at, and then so would it be possible we table, and then have it looked at to where we get that answer, and then go from there? Or uh, I don't think it's an issue because the, it can't be. A, you know, if you put or at least know what needs to be done to get it to be the code. But I don't you, think it's. I it's don't not. think that's part of our purview. I mean, if we approve it, then subject to yeah, then the every, building all the department would would you know issue the permit. Part of issuing the permit means that they go out and yeah. inspect it. Yeah. Gotcha. And even if it's you know mostly finished now, the building department is going to have to be able to see that it is brought up to code. If there's any deficiencies, then building department will make sure those are corrected before they issue what's called a certificate of occupancy. 
So I, you know, that I think that's that's the building department's uh, playing field, and so they they would address that. Um, in uh, so, so two two the two concerns that I the main two concerns that I heard number one. You're concerned that it's going to decrease. If it was done completely up to code and met all the city standards, you're you're concerned so it's going to. That's correct. That's that's what I'm saying. You yeah. you would still be concerned this would affect your property yeah. value. Okay. A, a single, I mean, a a, a six foot privacy fence wouldn't alleviate any of those concerns. Okay. <laughs> do you think? Do you think that a do you think that a privacy fence that where it cannot that structure cannot be seen from your property would mitigate your concerns about devaluing your property? I think it will. Okay. That's a twelve foot fence. <laughs> and your concern was that someone else may come down the street and decide they want to put an apartment as well. My assumption would be that, it, and, and again, I, this is an assumption that would have to be verified. If an apartment is put back there, it'll probably be unit two or something, or it can be done like that. To, and the fire department, the EMS services will make make themselves aware of everything that goes on there. I mean, that's, I was in the fire department in Houston, and we, you know, we were very familiar with every neighborhood that we serviced. It's a, it's a very good point. But I, Yes, ma'am, and I, th I think the fire department e EMS <coughs> service would make themselves very aware of, and it would be the responsibility of them as well to let the closest fire station know my mother lives in the back in case there's an emergency. I don't think there was an incident a while back where something happened over there and uh, EMS was called, and they were coming in between my house and Bruce's house, and then they realized they could go around, mm -hmm. and Right, and that's a very valid point, and I think that that's something, you know, I mean, again, this is, we're a long way from approval, I mean, but I think that can. Not only that, but it's fire. You know, where the house is located, there's trees, and there's, you know, like I said, our property. And so if a fire did break out, and, you know, the fire department didn't know that it was back there, or couldn't get to it soon enough, that it's liable to spread to all the other houses. I mean, it's just. I know these are ifs and buts, but I'm just. They're valid points. But I'm raising them. I'm sorry, they're not just ifs and buts because, like you said, EMS was called out and they didn't know where to go because they were called to Bruce's house, not our house. And they, they, they do know <laughs> that it's there. And we do have the gate in the front. And I understand that's, of course, a, a priority for us, too. I don't want sure. my mother to be in danger and I really don't know where she's at. But, you know, I'm also with the property value. Um, especially with the privacy fence, it has been working for years. Um, it, you know, it's one little old lady with <laughs> living in a, in a little building quietly and somebody is, you know, on somebody's property, which technically is her property now, um, versus, you know, these mega halfway houses just next door on the other side. So, Well, I don't think anybody's brought up, the, I, don't, I don't think there's been a, anybody speak about the fact that it would be a nuisance. I don't think that's. It was nuisance was on the screen a while back. Oh, that's just possibility. Different situations and scenarios um, 
things that are bringing property values down. Uh, Sabina, I have a question. If we approve a conditional use permit, does that go to the subsequent owner as well? Same terms? Yes, the conditional use permit runs with the property. The question about family only cannot be answered today, right, Mike? That would we'd have to table it to to get that answered. Good evening, Jason. Okay. <coughs> you know, um, this issue. I was thinking about it and doing a little bit of research. Um, you know, we, we talk about family only sometimes with respect to um, homes, even. You know, because sometimes, but um, and cities are, you know, trying to balance interests, homeowners and neighbors and community and stuff. And so family um, uh, has been expanded because of the mixed nature of families these days. And so that's, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not sure we, we get there completely there with this. And then um, this is probably one of those issues um, that the city really has, should, should have looked at over the last five or 10 years because these type of dwelling units, granny flats, um, they call them, or um, accessory dwelling units. I mean, they're a big, big business, if you will, mm -hmm. um, because people are looking for affordable housing. They're, I mean, families are congregating together more so now um, at times in the larger cities. And so we should have looked at it. Um, what I would suggest or recommend that you might want to do is have um, staff try to compile together all of your comments and the comments made here and come up with a um, you know kind of a reasonable document a resolution which addresses um, the aspect of the CEP and the conditions fencing we heard that skirting we heard that uh, of course you know this is just to, to your comment this is just like you know a business owner coming in and buying a piece of dirt and before he wants to build anything he wants to make sure he can use it for that purpose. And so this is normal. You, know, you get the zoning first, and then you go through the building permit process. Um, but that, getting back to what I was saying, you might want to have staff really look at this issue and come up with uh, you know, a real uh, uh, resolution and a conditional use permit that addresses these concerns that we've heard here. And then you can really look at that. And then this will be part, I'm sure this will be, you know, an ADU will be part of the, hopefully, the consideration of a new zoning code as we move forward past the comprehensive plan. Because again, this is an issue that's, that we should have addressed probably uh, a while ago. And there's, I mean, to, to put some type of a stipulation on a, each conditional use permit is individual, so just because we allow this to go here doesn't mean the next one is going to be allowed it's to go. It's not a precedent. It's not a precedent, but... No, not necessarily, but, you know, certainly if, if the conditions on the neighboring property or the property halfway across town is the same, then you would... So if you were to put some condition in this particular conditional use permit that say this property cannot be rented out? Um, to, like, a non-family member? Mm -hmm, and just not be rented uh, out at all? Yeah, that, I mean, you know, again, I would it's go look at the legality of that and, and probably give, you know, have staff give you all some ins and outs of how that works. I mean, one thing you got to think about with these CUPs, and I remind staff all the time, is enforcement. Right. So uh, when, when and if they were to move and we still have a, a you know, accessory unit in the backyard, you know, could we go knock on the door and say, hey, do you have a, <laughs> right. a res, you know, a, a, a family member, and how do you define family member? That right. So you got to think through no, the that's a touchy enforcement situation. process. Yeah. But what I would do is I would really look at it and try to apply as much now to the CUP or address as much now as we think is appropriate in the CUP with the idea of carrying that forward into a new uh, zoning code. That's a good idea. Yeah, so Mike. Uh, did I understand you to say basically for us to uh, table this and address staff, her charge of staff with addressing all these issues? Well, well I, yes, sir. And I, I say that not lightly because I know right. people are, you know, want to get stuff done yesterday. Um, 
But I think to address all these concerns, certainly the, the, um, the occupancy of the family, uh, you know, I'll need to research that. Uh, and then even to kind of cobble together wordsmith some of these conditions, I don't know if we're ready to do that on the flyer. You, you know, you all want to sit here and no, wait for I us to agree. do that. So I would, I would table it. I think we can get it back here in two weeks and then um, okay. give you all kind of a blueprint and you can kind of work through that. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. That was my question. I was going to ask, is the rear set back? No, it does. It it is currently not in compliance. It's 21 feet, uh, 21 feet, 21 and a half feet away from that rear property line. The use, this use, uh, as a department would require the full 25 foot setback unless the variance is granted by the zoning board of adjustment. Okay. Uh, so it's a three and a half foot variance. Yes. It's, it's that would be more. That would be more of a concern for the property owner in back than it would anything else. Yes, it, it complies with the side property, um, uh, with the side okay. setback. I live, I live right behind you. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, we've heard uh, legal counsel give us their thoughts. Do I have a motion? Yeah, I would make uh, a motion. Should we motion. give some, some of the conditions that we have in mind to staff uh, so that that could be applied? I mean, or, or I think that we should probably give staff a little bit of direction on the conditions that we're thinking of. Um, yep. For example, me, one would be privacy fence, mm -hmm. whether yep. that is either six foot or eight foot. Um, you know, uh, just listening to comments, I would, I would say eight foot, um, just because that's what uh, Mr. Wilson had, had mentioned. Um, but, you know, again, we'll let say the privacy screening would be one issue and um, emergency access yes. along with that privacy screening uh, would be something we need to have looked at. Now we also have issues with the sidewalk and we have issues with uh, parking. Mm -hmm. This requires uh, three on-site parking spaces and no more than two in front of the residence. So that requires a variance too. Is that correct? It it would unless additional parking was found on the on the site. Um, That's still going to be a variance. It likely. But it says only two uh, can be on the house up front. In the front yard, correct? Only two cars. That's what it says. Two parking spaces. Two parking spaces. Sabina, Zoic spent months on this issue if you can go back you can probably find some good data there there was issues like <coughs> the apartment needed to match the main house there was just lots of discussions on those things great if you can thank you dust that off <laughs> <laughs> uh, does this apartment require any kind of water facility in it does it have to have a toilet I, anything I, like yeah. that yeah. Is, do, is there one there Electrical, all kind of plumbing. Well, that goes to the meeting code, so. Yeah. yeah. But I'm just saying these are things that can and be subject to meeting the building code. Well, I mean, uh, you know, that comes down to a definition. Honestly, if if there's not a bathroom in this structure, I don't know that it can be called an apartment. That was my question. What is the definition um, of an apartment? And so at, at that the point, it's an accessory building with power to it. That to me that's different than an apartment. Um, you know, is it is it just a place? Is it a studio just to go sit and relax? Is it a playroom? I mean, it can be lots of things and have a window unit air conditioner right. and an electrical. So there's there, there's no anticipation on your part to put a bathroom in there. So there's water there. So there's water and drainage. There's water and there is a drainage. And the drainage mm -hmm. goes to the sewer system? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. According to the building code, to meet the requirement to be a, a residence where someone can call out a residence, you have to have a functioning um, facility. 
facilities for restrooms in the kitchen. So again, that would be addressed if this gets through this process with the CDG and allows to be made to an apartment. Right. Then we would um, we would um, look at the building code and it would have to meet the the requirements for residential dwellings. So you what? Correct. As an as an accessory use building, we can't. Right. We can limit. We can't limit what goes on in that building, but we can limit it as a residence, which means it can spend the night. And so it's just sleeping quarters. Correct. Actually, it's just it cannot be a sleeping quarters. They're not part of. So it's just sleeping quarters. So what you guys need to realize is we can go through this process, but if you're not if you're not planning on making this into a full restroom facility, then we're kind of, it's, it's kind of a moot point for you guys. Cause you're never gonna get a conditional use permit for an apartment back there if it's not an apartment. They set a drain field if you're on a city septic. I don't yeah. think you yeah. have a drain field. Yeah. And that would be I mean, that would be addressed during city wastewater. That would be addressed during the city's inspection, That's building right. inspection. I think uh, I mean, we it would take us a while to compile a list of all the things we need to address. Uh, can we do that? Well, do we need to do that in this meeting? If we table this I, I and think ask staff and direct you to uh, review these things? I think what Mike, Mr. Hayes has suggested is um, that you let us work on that and bring it back to you to, to review. Hope so yeah. table Just, it. I, I think the idea was to, to give us some, uh, your staff idea. Staff review. Right, and your idea was to was to give us some parameters for that, some things that, to give us some, some guidance on that. But we can, I think we have a, a good idea of what you're looking for there? and we can, we can work to put hey, together it. Who, who built this structure? No, I'm, I, I, I'm just, I'm not trying to get anybody in trouble, but. Grand construction. It was built as a storage building. 
So they built it, they were just building storage units. They just didn't get a permit for it. That's no. Okay. It's not, I'm not trying to, I'm just curious because it's not what we, do. <laughs> we can, like we said, we can go through the process, we can get the parameters for a conditional use permit, but unless <coughs> you guys are going to spend the money to put kitchens and bathrooms in and make this a true apartment connected up to the sewer system, you're, you're, you know, the conditional use permit can be given, but that's what's going to be acquired so you know what you're going to have to do. Okay, do I have a motion that we could put in a format to um, maybe table this and send it back to staff? I'll motion we table this until staff gets back to us at the next meeting with recommendations. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I have a motion and a second. Do you have any comments? If not, all in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Uh, five zero in motions table. Uh, staff report. I have nothing. Looking at Drew. Yeah. Okay. Oh yes, thank you. <laughs> uh, Planning commission does have a workshop scheduled for next Tuesday. Uh, I believe it's uh, off the top of my head. It's two p.m. Right. Uh, to look at the conditional use parking. Uh, you do have public hearing coming up for the comprehensive plan June 7th, and that'll go to city council June 12th and June 26th for the adoption of the comprehensive plan. Uh, let me ask you something. Do we have time to get uh, your, your recommendations back uh, for the next set meeting? On the, on the previous case? Mm -hmm. Our staff report is due to you next week, so it would be a bit of a time crunch. Uh, to you have to go back out again? To re-notify for, the, well, you've tabled, so essentially I don't believe okay, that we need to re-notify. Okay, you don't have to redo that. Okay. I see what you're saying now. That was my question. Right. You, you've tabled the item and the public hearing has been held, so. Okay, I so we could bring it back, it would not require another public hearing? Right, because understanding in, with, with the public notice is that you can place conditions and that's what and that's what you're working on doing. Okay, thank you. Uh, n any other business before this commission? If not, I'll accept the motion to adjourn. So moved. I have a motion, I have a second. Second. Second, all in favor. Five zero, we're adjourned, thank you.